two ways to build trust and respect in your relationship in order to make it successful. And at the end, stay tuned. And I'll also talk about how this relates to having more intimacy in your significant relationship. Good relationships are built on trust and respect and connection. So how do you build more trust and respect? And how do you clear things that perhaps are taking away from that connection with your significant other? Let me give you an example. Have you ever had a miscommunication where something really, really small ended up being something really huge down the road? Like, let's say I send you an email and I say, I'm going to give you a hundred bucks. You might be a little bit excited, right? I mean, even if a hundred bucks seems like no big deal, it's a free hundred bucks, right? And you're kind of like, yay, she's going to give me a hundred dollars. And then a day later, I realized like, oh, shoot, I said I was going to give him a hundred bucks. And I email you real quick and said, oh, I threw an extra zero in there. I actually was just going to give you 10 bucks. You're like, oh, well, that's not as exciting, but meh, still a free 10 bucks. Maybe you're a little disappointed, but kind of work with it, kind of get over it. But that zero made a big difference, didn't it? And your excitement level in the changes that happened afterwards, in your perception of what I was going to give you and what I wasn't going to give you. But now imagine this. I don't say anything at all. And instead, the next time I see you, I just hand you a $10 bill and say, here you go. Enjoy. Spend it on something fun for yourself. And then I walk away. And you're looking at like, what? She promised me on her bucks. And I have 10 bucks. What the heck? What's going to happen to your level of trust and respect for me? So every time we have a miscommunication with our partner and we don't rectify it, we already come with piles of stuff, right? Things from past relationships, right? Things that our parents taught us, ways we've been disappointed in life, that create kind of a pile of stuff. And then every time you do something or say something or miscommunicate or don't fix a challenge or don't communicate about a way you've been hurt, all you're doing is you're adding one more stone. Now, when I go hiking on trails, having stone piles like this says, hey, this is the right way. This is the way that you want to go. But what if it's in the middle of a trail? Trip over it. It's not as exciting. So have you ever been confused by miscommunication with your partner? And then allowed your mind to create even a bigger pile of stuff? So imagine now, instead of saying like, why did they lie to me? Why didn't she give me what she promised? She said she was gonna give me hundred bucks, she only gave me 10. Is she gonna give me 90 more another day? Did she forget she was gonna give me a hundred? So I'm creating this huge mind spin about it. Why don't we communicate? Have that conversation. Because wouldn't you prefer a conversation that opens up trust and respect instead of creating all the stories in your mind based upon the piles from the past? Wouldn't that be easier for your life? Wouldn't that take a lot less energy? So one thing you can do with your partner is say, hey, what I heard you say was X. I heard you say you were going to give me $100. Are you still open to doing that? Did something change? Have you been too busy? You don't want to accuse and say, hey, you said you were going to give me 100 bucks. You only gave me 10. What the heck? Because what's that going to do? That tone, that energy is going to make your partner go like, oh my gosh, like, why are they so upset? Instead, come with an openness, a curiosity, an assumption that your partner maybe forgot, made a mistake, miscommunicated, that you maybe misheard. I see this all the time in pet peeves, right? So someone's like, hey, I really need you to load the dishwasher with all the glasses and please don't put the cutting boards in the dishwasher. It's not good for them. And then the next time they open up the dishwasher, like there's the cutting board and the glasses are on the bottom shelf too, because there was no room on the top shelf. And instead of just 
Now we've got to fix it. And instead of saying anything, we just get frustrated and angry. And it's a pet peeve. And we're like, God, they can't even freaking empty the dish or put it, <laughs> load the dishwasher properly. And it becomes a thing that now we lose a little bit of trust or respect or connection with our partner because now we're focused on why the dishwasher wasn't loaded properly. So instead of coming at our partner and saying like, hey, why didn't you, why did you put the dishes in the dishwasher again wrong? Come at it with, once again, openness, curiosity. Maybe they were in a hurry and they just wanted to get things off the counter for you so there was more counter space and meant to come back and fix it and didn't. Maybe they forgot, which can be a pet peeve of its own. Or maybe they don't really understand what it means to you. So tune in yourself. What does it actually mean if your partner doesn't fill the dishwasher properly? Does it mean that they don't respect you? That they're not listening to what you ask for? Does it mean that you feel like you have to do extra work? That no one pays attention? That you're unheard, uncared for, unloved? Why is it so triggering for you? Maybe it means that it'll wreck the dishwasher or it'll wreck your favorite cutting board and you'll have to go buy a new one or it's irreplaceable. When you communicate with your partner exactly why, but also have the understanding deep down of why, it changes the whole ball game. So now imagine instead of saying like, hey, why didn't you just, why did you put the cutting board in the dishwasher again? Why didn't you just do it the way I asked you to do? If you say, hey, this cutting board means a lot to me. It was a gift. It's wood. And when it goes in the dishwasher, it could actually wreck it. And I'm really emotionally attached to it. So can you please be careful to not put it in the dishwasher in the future? I'd really love that. Do you think that maybe now your partner is more receptive to hearing and next time they accidentally try to put the wash, the cutting board in the dishwasher, they're going to go like, oh, that's right. This is really important. Instead of just being like, I don't know why it's such a big deal that the cutting board, the cutting board, I put cutting boards in the dishwasher a million times and it hasn't hurt them, right? So instead of them justifying it, now they've got a reason and a way to support you and listen to you. Can you see how different that is? Another th challenge that I see in relationships is that we project onto other people. Because, you know, my mom didn't listen to me. My last boyfriend didn't listen to me either. You know what? My boss doesn't care about any of my ideas. And that pile gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And we project that outward onto our partner about why they don't listen to us as well. So instead of creating that rock pile, that's gonna create the path for the rest of your relationship the annoyances, the frustrations, your own mental spinning, the miscommunications, the anger. How about instead you step back and say, why does this bother me so much? And as I just mentioned, actually take ownership. Maybe one of the miscommunications we had, they thought we were teasing or they thought we were kidding. They heard it wrong. Maybe they were distracted and thinking about something and you said out loud, like, hey, I need you not to put the cutting board in the dishwasher. And they thought you meant a different cutting board or they thought you meant just not in this one spot or, or whatever, or it's too dirty. Like maybe they mis totally misinterpreted what you said about the cutting board because you weren't clear enough. Have you ever heard something differently than someone else intended it? Right? So that's why it's important to review your own actions and your own words as well in the relationship. Do you always do what you said you'd do? I know that one of the challenges I ran into in a former relationship is I'm an extrovert, so I talk out loud. And I say like, hey, maybe we should do this, and I think we should do this, and wouldn't it be great if we did that? And I would actually kind of out loud make a plan and make a promise. I would never say the word promise, but I'd be like, hey, and then maybe in a couple of days, I think what could happen, you know, I'm going to get off work early and then maybe we can go for a walk. And I think that would be really fun. And he wouldn't really say anything. And I'd just be kind of throwing ideas out on the table. But him being an introvert, he would think about it. He'd process it. 
Well, two days later, I've already got a different plan because now the weather's changed. I'm like, hey, you know what would actually be really fun instead? So instead of going for a hike, which I didn't, wouldn't even say, I would actually just be like, hey, so what I was thinking is now on our free time today, we should cook some food for the week. I went out already and I bought some groceries and it would be really fun to sit down and have a glass of wine and just really cook and hang out. And he's like, but what, that, what happened to our hike, right? And he would hear that I wasn't doing what I already promised to do. And he had given himself two days to get excited about it. And I barely remembered that I said we should go for a hike because I was just talking about loud about all the possibilities that I was excited about. Have you ever done anything like that? Changed your mind? Maybe not communicated clearly? <laughs> so when there is a miscommunication like that, or when you realize that you're not doing what you said you'd do, or maybe you did something that you didn't mean to do, you said something maybe not in the clearest way, take ownership. I mean, sometimes we justify it too. Like, oh, I know I said I'd take out the garbage, but I ended up putting the kids to bed or I had to work late and they'll understand. It's not really that big of a deal. It's just taking the garbage out to the curb. They've got time to do it. And we justify in our heads instead of realizing that our partner is actually feeling like you don't care enough to take the garbage out. But sometimes we even justify our own actions and assume that our partner is justifying it right along with us and sees that we had a busy day at work and that we were putting the kids to bed and that we were doing all these other things and that's why we didn't get the garbage out the way that we said. When you come at it and say, hey, I'm really sorry, I didn't get the garbage out yesterday, I meant to, things got in the way, I'm gonna try to be better about it in the future, whatever it is. But you come to them with vulnerability with integrity, with honesty about the miscommunication, not only does it allow them to kind of calm down as well, right? Because maybe they're upset in their head and you don't even know it. But then you're like, oh shoot, I was gonna take out the garbage. Oh my gosh, they did it. Thank you so much for taking out the garbage. I meant to do it. I got sidetracked. I really appreciate that you saw that and took care of that. Because now if they are building up their little rock pile of anger or frustration or feeling unloved in their head, that can calm down, that can go away. And it also sets the stage for them to come at you with vulnerability and honesty and integrity when they don't do something that they say. And isn't that the kind of foundation? Isn't that the trail that you wanna create for your relationship? Creating clear trail markers makes your whole life easier. And who doesn't want an easier relationship? When you create emotional and intellectual intimacy, or it also can lead to better physical intimacy, it can lead to more connection, it can lead to happier relationships, better marriages. When you build trust in one area of your relationship, it transfers to all other areas. I'm Dawn Bennett helping you create freedom from emotional baggage in all of your relationships. Please subscribe and share to those that you need support and I'll see you next time. Be loved and be loving. Namaste.